constantly repeated throughout the media, I've heard it, Donald Trump said it, that withdrawing from Iraq too soon is what caused the rise of ISIS. Ignore the fact that they withdrew in 2011 and then just focused their attention on uh, Syria, the conflict that they started there in 2011. You know, they wanted to take down another country and overthrow the leader there. And ignore the fact that when Obama took the troops out, he just took them and dumped them in Afghanistan and then tripled the size of the war on Afghanistan. Uh, aside from that, they never did leave Iraq. And I'm going to tell you why they never left Iraq. Because even though there's not all those troops there anymore, they still hold complete and utter control of Iraq in pretty much every sense. If you don't believe me, search up the 100 orders which was put on Iraq. This was during the Bush, Bush administration and was done indefinitely. So this would be set in Iraqi law. So when they even left you know, they started, you know, the withdrawal, um, where they still had 140,000 odd uh, troops in there occupying and plus 20,000 odd contractors from other countries and 20,000 contractors uh, additional from the U.S. that weren't regarded as occupation troops. Even after that, and even after the 2011 official withdrawal by Obama, Obama, sorry, um, they have these hundred laws. Now, if you don't read through these laws, you probably just pass it off. Oh, well, the hundred orders, yeah, well, it just sounds like something that would have been passed off when you leave a country. You know, you're going to leave it after a war. You're going to do something like that. But let me read to you some of these uh, laws that were put in place. And you see if they're reasonable. And you see if America or other foreign countries still don't have any sort of ownership over Iraq. So I got my laptop here and I'm going to go through some of these orders. Okay, let's look at number 39 for instance, which this is just uh, one order within one order. Number one, the privatization of Iraq's 200 state-owned enterprises. Number two, 100% foreign ownership of Iraqi businesses. Number three, international treatment of foreign firms. Unrestricted tax-free remittance of all profits and other funds and 40-year ownership licenses. Plus, it allows the U.S. corporations operating in Iraq to own every business, do all of the work, and send all of their money home. Nothing needs to be reinvested locally to service the Iraqi economy. No Iraqi need to be hired. No public services need to be guaranteed. And workers' rights can easily be ignored. That's just one order. Let's go to number 40, which turns the banking sector from a state-run to a market-driven system overnight by allowing foreign banks to enter the Iraqi market and to purchase 50% of Iraqi banks. Number 49, order 49, drops the tax rate on corporations from a high of 40% to a flat rate of 15%. The income, income tax rate is also capped at 15%. Uh, Order 12, for instance, which was enacted first on June the 7th of 2003 and renewed on February the 24th of 2004, which suspends all tariffs, customs duties, import taxes, licensing fees, and similar surcharge, uh, surcharges for goods entering or leaving Iraq, and all other trade restrictions that may apply to such goods. This led to an immediate and dramatic inflow of cheap consumer products, which has essentially wiped out all local providers of the same products. Can you not start to see why I'm saying that they never left? Because they pretty much own them. Um, let's look at number 17, which grants foreign contractors, including private security firms, full immunity from Iraq's laws. Even if they do injure a third party by killing someone or causing environmental damage, such as dumping toxic chemicals or poisoning drinking water, the injured third party cannot turn to the Iraqi legal system. Rather, the charges must be brought to the U.S. courts under U.S. laws, which we know is not going to happen. 
Order 77, for instance, established the Board of Supreme Audit and named its president, his two uh, deputies, and his two deputies. The board oversees inspectors in every ministry with wide-ranging authorities to review government contracts, audit classified programs, and prescribe regulations and procedures. Order 57, for instance, created and appointed an inspector within every Iraqi ministry within five-year terms who can perform audits, write policies, and have full access to offices, materials, and employees of the ministry. So, do you begin to understand that they never left? Just because they withdrew the troops does not mean they left. They never did. And ISIS, ISIS in Syria, for instance, five times the United States has accidentally dropped weapon supplies to ISIS. Five times is not plausible. I don't believe that the United States... I can believe there's some dumb people that do live in every country on the planet, but I do not believe that the United States five times dropped weapons to ISIS. I do not believe it at all. It's not plausible but <clears throat> to believe that. But they did not lead to the rise of ISIS by pulling out of Iraq. They created ISIS. They've been funding ISIS. ISIS are driving around in U.S. Humvees with M16s. <laughs> it, it's ridiculous. You're trying to blame it. Oh, the Iraqi people, you know, they're just these violent, horrible people that just want to create groups like ISIS to kill the rest West for no reason. And we had to be there to occupy them, to make sure that... They never expanded and tried to kill us. Well, there was never a threat to America by Iraq. And it's the same logic that the Israelis use in the West Bank and Gaza. Ah, well, if we lifted the siege and we lifted the occupation, they just all kill us because they're violent Arab Muslims. You know what that is? That's, that is just blatant racism. And a lot of shit is called racism today, but that is racism. That is actually bigotry. That's something real. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. And the stereotypes that are going around are completely wrong. What's happened is a result of U.S. foreign policy, which was pushed by APAC, the APAC lobby. If you don't believe me, you can read things like the PNAC documents if you want to. You can go very far into this. But I'd search up, I'd consider searching up the, uh, two, the 100 orders to uh, read for them and tell me if Iraq is now an independent country. Peace.